Hillary, thank you. Joining me right now is former White House Press Secretary and America First Action Senior Advisor Sean Spicer. Sean, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for weighing in here. Good to see you. I wish I was over there with you, though. That sounds a lot more fun. <laughs> Well, it is pretty fun, I must say. Uh, but what about Florida? That's going to be a lot of fun, right? I mean, you've got uh, lines of people. The, the base for President Trump is as solid as ever. What are you expecting from this kickoff for the 2020 campaign? Well, first of all, I mean, look, they're having it in Florida. It's no surprise. Uh, Florida and Ohio are key to the president's victory to get over uh, 270 electoral votes and you got Michigan, Pennsylvania, Minnesota, I think is going to be in play. But I think you're going to see this election play over about five to eight states where the electoral map make, needs to take shape. So the president's clearly having it here. This is an opportunity to fire up his base, make sure that they understand the intensity that's needed to propel them to victory. We need to take Florida basically off the map. Right. So Ohio, Florida, North Carolina are states the president needs. He needs to get in early, make sure that those folks are fired up. The real difference between last year and this year is the sophistication by which the campaign and the RNC are working together. You've got America First down there registering voters in Florida and three other states spending $20 million. We're making sure that all those people who turn out to support the president, thousands of them, are registered to vote, are, you know, are engaged in the system. Uh, and the team has got this sophisticated data operation to make sure that voter by voter we know exactly who's going out to vote, who might go out to vote, uh, and who's sitting on the sidelines. But this is going to be the much more sophisticated operation than it was last time. And I think that's going to give the president a huge strategic advantage, coupled with the accomplishments that he's had in his first term. Yeah. What, what about the issues at hand, Sean? So uh, would the Iran crisis come up? Or is the president going to deal with some of the things that he's dealing with every day? I mean, now the U.S. is preparing to send a thousand additional troops to the Middle East to respond to what they're calling hostile behavior by Iran. We know what happened in the last two weeks. Uh, Iran says it's going to exceed its cap on enriched uranium stockpiles going against the 2015 Iran nuclear deal. Are issues like this, do you think, going to come up uh, where the president talks about this with his supporters? Yeah, that's a great question because there's two things right here. One is the policy. The second is the politics. On the policy, I just got to say that it's interesting. The president, the Pentagon, announced this thousand troop movement to the region. President Rouhani of Iran seems to at least have backed down from the rhetoric so far. I mean, I think he recognizes how serious this president is and that idle threats towards the United States are not going to be taken lightly. So I think on the policy side, the president has made the right move. I expect to see Iran come down. The other thing that I think is interesting on the policy front is this is the president who pulled out of the Iran deal because he said it was a bad deal. And look what's been going on. As Iran has already been doing everything they can to get out of the deal that still is in effect with Europe, all the European countries that signed on to this deal, proving, I think, to some degree that the president was right that this deal was not a good deal for the U.S., that Iran was always going to cheat. Second, on the political front to your question, I don't think you're going to see a ton of this come up. The American people, by and large, aren't focused on foreign policy, on issues specific to one country in one region. He's going to be talking about how their lives are better specifically. My guess is you're going to see a lot of talk on the economy, things that are specific to different constituencies in the United States, military members, veterans, et cetera, small businesses with respect to cutting regulation tax cuts, how they're affecting people's lives, all those kind of things that make people better. The age-old question, are you better off than you were four years ago, will likely get posed in some way, shape, or form over the course of the president's remarks. And resoundingly, then he will tick off a list of ways in which it has and the promises that he's made and the promises that he's kept over the last few years. Yeah. Well, there's also the border issue, right? And the president has been yep. saying that the Mexicans, the Mexican government is doing more to help the border crisis than the Democrats. So you know that the Democrats and the attacks on him are also going to be front and center. He'll probably bring that up as well. Unequivocally. I mean, look, th this has gone from people saying that there was no crisis just a few months ago to now questioning what we have to do. But the president has been very consistent through his time as a candidate, now as president, that we have a problem at the southern border. We've seen it grow greater and greater with this migration of folks coming straight up. The key thing is, though, that he has finally stood up to, to the Mexican government. And you have seen real and tangible results in terms of what Mexico is doing at its own southern border to prevent the flood of people up through Central America. You're also seeing additional provisions that they have used this new central police and their military to protect our southern border, stop people before they get in. 
it's actually having what it appears real results. The president once again is, has has you know looked at this problem and delivered for the American people. But make no mistake, he is going to make it very clear the contrast that exists between him and his policies, standing up for this country and protecting our southern border, and the Democrats seemingly uh, advocate for open borders and mocking this crisis as as being something that's not there when it's so apparent to every American with with eyes. Yeah, it's, it's pretty obvious. Hey, Sean, you're going to have a role in the 2020 campaign at all? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm with America First. We're out there registering voters. We're going to be making sure that we support his ads. So, yeah, I mean, my role is with the Super PAC. Uh, it's a much more enjoyable role than the past. There's some great mm. folks, as I mentioned, working at the RNC and the, and the campaign hand in glove day to day. But, uh, but I think right. America First is, a, is, for me, a much more uh, calming, calming presence to, to be part of this role. We place. will be watching. It will be an exciting year ahead. Sean, thank you. Sean Spicer, always great to get your insights. We'll see you soon, Sean. Coming up, more trouble for Boeing to report. One of its top competitors, Airbus, is laying the groundwork for the longest-range single-aisle plane yet. Do it while Boeing is down. That's the word at Airbus. Then Facebook's crypto craze, the social media giant, releasing the highly anticipated details.